The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to a bill in Boca Raton. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Not too much. Enjoying the warm weather in Florida just like you, except on the other coast. Perfect, man. Perfect. Yep. Do you listen on the Internet right now? Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. No, I, I enjoy that. That's in your Tiger TV and everything. I've been watching you for years, and you've really taken this whole programming to a level that's just phenomenal. I appreciate it. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go two hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day out there, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Manifest your true intentions. Whatever language you speak. Your intent will manifest through the word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will be manifested through what you say each and every day. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow up 143, Nasdaq up 21, S&P's up 15, gold contract down $92, trading at $1,769 an ounce. Silver off $2.40 at $39.88 an ounce. Platinum down 45 bucks at $1,817 an ounce. Copper. Up two pennies at 401 a pound. Light sweet crude flat at 84.12. Bonds down two and a half points at 136.12. Dollar index up 10 ticks at 74.07. The euro is off 23 ticks at 144. And the yen's up 32, trading out at 76.98. Our phone number is 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We get, we're at 11.77. You get the swing point that's hanging up there. The bottom of that swing is 11.84. The top is 12.08. Now, we did 1.1 1 .1 billion today. And that's, uh, you know, I, I know this is a counter trend bounce. Well, you know, I'm speculating this is a counter trend bounce. But what you have is this, is that the, you're going against the 8th, of August and of course the 18th and you had a contraction a very heavy contraction by the way folks once again what that's setting up is that that looks to me like it's setting up well yeah we'll bang into the 1184 then you'll come back and we will make a third higher low I don't expect we're going back to the lows but the way this market is trading you know it's 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 built it's it's getting constructive down at the bottom to get to higher prices but right now the juice is just not there so what I expect you'll see Nice volatility. Volatility is a trader's best friend. There's no two ways about that. Uh, today, as someone, uh, one of the Tigers said in the den, there was something for everyone. Uh, S&P-wise, folks, there absolutely was. If you're in front of a screen, when you take a look at the, the cash S&P, the little baby, uh, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning, was up to uh, 1175. It gets back to 1157, 56, goes right back to 1175. So it was all out there. That's your S&P. We go over to the Dow Industrials. We take a look at the Dow. What you have with the Dow is this. Same type of setup. You're up 143 points. Now, the Dow is at 11,320. It hit the 11,331.57. The good news is that it's stopping right before that swing point. So the Dow is going to have a shot to get into that swing point tomorrow. Now, that swing point, folks, has dramatically lighter volume. You know, when we take a look at that swing, and this is, this is what's helpful... In the context of how the swing sets up, it's only 972 million. So bottom line, that absolute can get in there, get some juice going, and I expect, just like the S&P, that you'll back off from that area, but that will build a higher low, actually, in order to get up to higher prices. We're going to take a look at the NASDAQ composite. NASDAQ composite now is right into the gap. That was up 21 bucks. We're at 2467. That bottom of the gap is 2480. Let's see, 2488. We got to 2470 today. Nasdaq did 1.8 billion shares. Now that baby's going into 2.8 and 4 billion shares. So the Nasdaq itself also needs more juice in order to get up and over it. If we go to the spy, we'll look at these in the context of the 
ETF structures, this is what you have. You did 237 million shares today. That's going against 500 and going against uh, the 700. I do expect we're going to get higher prices and it's going to be on lighter volume. But the way this was trading here today, it looks to me that that swing point on the 17th will back it away once again, freak the markets out once again. And this is what, the, the, the thing that's wild here is that it actually makes a, a bottom that can be in place a little bit longer. And when you get a little push off that bottom, it will be up fast. My, my take is that, yeah, the S&Ps still want to get up this 1260, you know, and 1300 is game, which is bizarre. But bottom line is that the way this market's trading right now, that's, that's what it looks like. Okay, gold. Let's go over to the gold market. We have a gold out here, folks. Gold, high to low today, big numbers once again. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday what you had, of course, is that we hit all-time high in gold, $1,917.90. Uh, it got to a low today of $1,751. You've had two huge accelerations on the way down. You get volume off the top, and a bottom line is that that always sets up monster corrections. You know, in this particular case, you know, as we've been talking about, what you also have, and this is what's always dangerous, when you get a 30% move in six weeks with no juice, that's a parabolic move, and that kills markets. And that's exactly what happened in the gold market. Now, you won't let them out now, folks. That, that's, that's how these markets work. If you go to the GLD, you take a look at the GLD. We did 69 million shares today. Yesterday, I did 55 million. Uh, the GLD is trading at 171.64. It's already into the last time that it had any juice in it, which is 173. What you can expect, and this is sad, but true. Well, we'll find out whether it's true. <laughs> uh, is tomorrow, you can expect the same type of trading in the gold market. Um, the reason I'm speculating on that, folks, is that it'll set up, well, the two different, well, I'll start at the beginning. The, the reason I, I expect that, number one, is that the selling in gold is going to accelerate. And the reason, that, now this is, a, this is a factual deal, that yesterday what you had is this. You, you gotta remember something. The GLD is the largest holder of gold. You know, that, that trades it, let's put it that way, okay? What happened, never mind today, what happened yesterday. Now every day, at the end of the day, I'll get these numbers in about another, uh, it's about an hour and a half after I get off the air. I actually know how, how much the GLD had to sell in physical gold, okay? Yesterday, they had to sell 1.9% of their position. Today, I f suspect it's gonna be the same amount. What that does, folks, is that it makes a cascade event on the way down. Because that, when they sell the physical gold, what ends up happening is that that is a cash transaction. Someone's gonna be out there to buy it. Now, what happens in the cash market is this is that, you know, everyone at, you know, uh, we get about another 45 minutes left at Tiger Metal Exchange that we will be clean. At, at, four, at five o'clock every night, we're clean. What has happened, no doubt, the last three or four weeks, it's been like a hot potato in the physical market holding gold. You know, everyone wants to get everything moved out so the, the overnight risk is not there. And the reason, one of the main reasons, by the way, folks, is that the spread that every large dealer is working on is a lot less than people think, number one, and that you can't take hits like this or you're, you're done. Okay, so the bottom line, and this is important to understand in the context of how ETFs work. Last night, they had to push out, they had to sell seven, seven I think it was 738,000 ounces of gold. Tonight, they're probably going to have to sell the same amount. What happens is that when you get the momentum up, that's one thing. They're going to buy, buy, buy. But when you get the momentum down, it's so fast and furious, what ends up happening? One event feeds on, it's the other event. So the gold gets sold tonight, what ends up happening? Puts more pressure on the way down, more selling, more gold. You know, if, if you were around in uh, 2000, um, in fact, the first day that the Qs traded on the American Stock Exchange, I had the vice president of the American Stock Exchange on the air. And of course, this was in uh, 94, I believe, 94 or 95. And what you had happen then is this, is that that's the ETFs had just started. And what happened is that as the market's going higher inside the ETF structure, I'm talking about the Qs in particular now, 
what you had was that as more folks bought the queues, what ended up happening? Well, in that particular point, the waiting structure inside the queues, the biggest waiter were Dell, Microsoft, Intel, and Microsoft. There was one other one. I forget the other one. I should know. The, the fourth. Oh, Cisco. Cisco. Okay. So what happened is this. Every single time someone buy the queues, well, the NDX 100 would have to buy the stock. That went on, folks, accelerate on the way up. Well, what folks were not thinking of is that when we got the high in March of 2000, when the selling started on the way down, two different things happened there. If, in fact, you sell Dell, Microsoft, Intel, or Sun Micro, just the selling of that made the queues go lower, so then they have to sell queues. Then you have, if people sell on the queues, they had to sell those four stocks, those, what that would meant, that, that made those go lower. That's what you're dealing with here on the GLD, folks. It's a big deal, so pay attention to it. Now, that's the bad news, right? You get, you get three days down, same amount of velocity. What does it set up? Well, that sets up three black crows, folks. And what three black crows love to do, and this is the deviant part, and this is huge de de deviant, is that then they love to go get tested again. So what you'll see, you know, if we get the three black crows, we get that tomorrow, what you'll see is that you'll have an, another shot. That, that this is going to be a trader's paradise for another, you know, six months to a year, is that you'll see a slow grind almost all the way back up to those levels again. The way that I look at it to see, okay, is it going to take it over or is that it? Of course, it's going to be have the volume characteristic, how you come back into it. That's so. That's the setup in the gold market right now. Let's go to uh, uh, Tom in Massachusetts. Hey, Tom, what's going on? You there? He 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 wanted to look at the bond. If we go take a look at the bond market, folks, uh, what you have with bonds is this: the twenty-year today, thirty-year rather, uh, comes down two and a half points. You're at one thirty-six fourteen. Uh, this little baby is making its way into the one thirty-one eleven. And um, you're going to get a nice deep retracement here because what you do have is that you have uh, volume coming out of this one, too. If we go over to the TLT and we look at the TLT, oh, that's interesting. TLT didn't have any volume. Oh, okay. The bond market's not done yet. <laughs> oh, man, this is a trip. Okay, so check it out. So the TLT comes down at 3 bucks today. And uh, you're at the uh, 106.28 mark. That wants to go in and test about that uh, 103 mark. How you get into 103 uh, is going to be the number out there. Some of the high volume stocks we have out here as we take a look at them, this is what you have. You had uh, Bank of America up 69 cents. You had Cisco up two. Citigroup was up a buck 13. JP Morgan Chase was up a buck. You had Morgan Stanley up 57 cents. Uh, after the close out here, uh, let's see. This has been a dog uh, on the way down, uh, which is collective brands. They come out with numbers, evidently. They closed at 1028. It's trading at 13, but it's been a dog all the way down. We're going to be right back, folks. X Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in Argentina. X Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually beginning in 2013 at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of newsletters Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investments and Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks.
Is the fast-moving investment world challenging the way you think about managing risk and return? You don't have to go it alone. Direction's alternative strategy funds feature built-in tactical management to help you find clarity for the path ahead. Direction Funds, I'm with X. To learn more about Direction's alternative strategy funds, please visit TFNN.com and click on the Direction Funds banner or call 877-434-9363. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus contains this and other information about Direction Funds. The prospectus should be read carefully before investing. To obtain a prospectus, go to DirectionFunds.com. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. The use of leverage by a mutual fund increases the risk to the fund. The more a fund invests in leveraged instruments, the more leverage will magnify gains or losses on those investments. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. For some extra cash to help pay off some of your bills? Let Tiger Metal Exchange convert your unwanted jewelry to cash. We pay out 80% of the market price for gold. Our payouts are the highest in the industry, more than double our largest competitors. And we've created the safest, easiest, and most straightforward process for converting your jewelry to cash. Log on to TigerMetalExchange.com and get your free scale, your free eye loop, and get the cash you deserve now. We provide a free online calculator that converts your jewelry to cash at up-to-the-minute spot prices. We insure your items for up to $75,000 per shipment free of charge. We videotape the entire valuation process so that you can view it online. You can call us toll-free at 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. Let Tiger Metal Exchange put more cash in your pocket without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Join the list of thousands of satisfied customers and go to TigerMetalExchange.com. It's the only click you need to make. TFNN introduces Tiger TV. Tiger TV brings you video content to help you succeed in the financial markets and beyond. Investors and traders can get in-depth information, news, commentary, and education for investing and trading equities, options, commodities, forex, 